Hey guys, it's Jeff from Pressure Luck, and today I felt like doing a little bit of an hors d'oeuvre, hors d'oeuvres, or uh, appetizer. Uh, you know, one of the favorite things that I love to get when I go to the cocktail hour is, well, also when I go to a Thai restaurant, are chicken satay. Now, chicken satay are typically chicken tenderloins that are on a skewer, and they have this delicious peanut butter sauce that like coat them, and they're almost sort of like lollipop style. Delicious, I absolutely love them. And I said, how great would this be to do in the Instant Pot? So great, in fact, that it belongs in a book. My Yellow Simple Comforts book, Step-by-Step -step Instant Pot Cookbook. It's in there in the chicken chapter. Thai chicken satay. It's gonna look like this. All the recipes in all my books, by the way, have gorgeous color step-by-step -step photos, as well as a final shot of what every single recipe should look like. Excuse me there. <clears throat> so there's no guesswork on anything. Look, I'm just gonna show you how to make this recipe. It's that simple, it's that amazing. So let's go right to our Instant Pot and maybe put on some RuPaul because my friends, we are going to satay away. Let's do it. First, I'm gonna hit the saute button on my Instant Pot control panel, and then I'm going to make sure I'm at the high temperature or the more setting, depending on your model, either more or high. And then if your model has a start button, hit that to begin the function, and if it doesn't, it'll start on its own. I wanna add in two tablespoons or a quarter of a stick of salted butter. And when I say add in, I mean to the Instant Pot. Now, while the butter is melting, I wanna prepare two and a half pounds worth of chicken tenderloins. That's exactly what they're called in the market, chicken tenderloins. Uh, and just like put them in a bowl, get them ready. And um, you're gonna notice that your tenderloins might have like this, almost like this little chewy tenderloin tendon fat tab thing. Someone should just tell me what this is called um, <laughs> because I know someone will. You can cut these out before you cook them or you can leave them in. They're gonna be chewy if you leave them in. So I, I suggest cutting them out when you prepare them. Okay, once our butter is melted, I wanna take my chicken tenderloins in batches and I wanna just sear them for about 90 seconds in the butter and kind of move them around a little bit. And it's each side that I wanna saute them on for 90 seconds. Well, right after about 90 seconds on one side, flip them over and we get the other side. They should not be fully cooked at this point. That's gonna happen when we pressure cook them. All right, and when we're looking like this, we are good. You see we have a little bit of like that little crust on there, that's nice. Again, they shouldn't be fully cooked. It's perfectly fine, you still have some pink showing. All right, and now we're gonna just add our remaining chicken tenders. Do the same thing here. And there we have it, that slightly like golden crust on some of them, that's great. I'm gonna set that aside, and now you're gonna have a pot full of some brown bits from the chicken. And we're gonna start off with our sauce and we're gonna remove all of that. What I wanna do is I wanna add in two teaspoons each of Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire sauce. I know it sounds bizarre to put in this dish, but trust me on it. And two teaspoons of either soy sauce, I use low sodium, or you could use tamari, which is a gluten-free soy sauce, or coconut aminos, which is a gluten-free and soy-free version of a soy sauce, and a little bit sweeter, but it doesn't taste like coconut. We're gonna add that to the pot. And then we are going to deglaze the bottom. Everything is going to come up. All of those brown bits of chicken that was caked on should be coming up. Good. Next up, we're gonna add in a 13 and a half to 14 ounce can, or somewhere around there, of coconut milk, unsweetened. We also wanna make sure that the coconut milk is nice and watery, okay? Not thick and lumpy. Just like this. Shake the can in the market to make sure it is. I also want to use or get a four ounce can of a Massaman curry. I'm using a Massaman curry paste here that the brand is Macery. I think it's phenomenal. You can find it in many international markets or online. I want to divide this by just adding two tablespoons of it to it now. I'm going to add the remaining amount at the very end. I'm also going to add in the juice of one lime. Three tablespoons of fish sauce. Now this stuff is gonna smell pungent when you first sniff it out of the little bottle when you shake it out and three tablespoons seems like a lot, but I'm telling you, it's gonna not taste fishy, it's gonna taste delicious when it's mixed in with everything. One tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. One tablespoon of crushed or minced or squeezed ginger. I love this thing called squeezed ginger. It looks like applesauce. You can find it in the produce section of your market. Sometimes Costco carries it. It's much easier than having to like basically pulverize some ginger. I'm also gonna add in one tablespoon of light or dark brown sugar and one teaspoon of ground cumin and about a bunch or a, bit, a quarter to a third of a cup of tarragon leaves, fresh tarragon leaves, or you can use Thai basil leaves, but those are not as easy to find and tarragon leaves will definitely do the trick. Now we're gonna stir all that up 
in the pot together. Stir it up until the curry paste kind of dissolves into the sauce. Now I'm gonna take my chicken and I'm gonna lay it back in the pot. Kind of just like in a layered situation here. You can put the juices from the plate back in there as well, and that is looking good. And now, it is time to pressure cook. We're gonna secure our lid, make sure that we're in the sealing position with the valves. Some models will automatically do that for you when you put the lid on. And now I'm gonna come back down on my control panel, hit the cancel button, and then the pressure cook button. And I wanna go for 10 minutes at high pressure. And now that we're done pressure cooking, we're gonna finish it with a quick release. And now the pin just dropped, so I'm gonna take my lid off. And there's my cooked chicken, and now what I want to do is take some tongs and remove my chicken to a plate, leaving the sauce in there. Okay, perfect, and I'm going to set that aside, all the chicken, and now we're going to focus on turning this into the most amazing satay sauce. Alright, now I'm going to hit the cancel button again, and then I'm going to hit the saute button again, and then make sure I'm on the more or the high setting and bring it to a bubble. While my pot is coming to a bubble, I want to combine two tablespoons of cornstarch along with two tablespoons of cold water, and then I want to mix them together into what's going to form a cornstarch slurry, which my mantra for this is a cornstarch slurry always thickens in a hurry. It's going to make that satay sauce in the pot nice and thick. Perfect consistency. All right. You have to make it a slurry before you add cornstarch directly to a sauce. Because if you just add cornstarch to the sauce and you don't temper it ahead of time like this into a slurry, it's going to just clump up like a ball of cellophane. And it's no good. It won't even do anything. You have to always do a slurry. Simple. Easy. Okay, now once my sauce begins to bubble, I want to now add that cornstarch slurry in and just stir it directly into the sauce and it's going to thicken up almost immediately. Now, it wouldn't be a satay sauce if we didn't have a key ingredient and that is going to be peanut butter. And I am adding a half a cup of peanut butter you can use. Chunky, you can use creamy, whatever you want. And I also want to add in the remainder of my Massaman curry paste, the other two tablespoons. Okay, and now I'm going to just stir that up until my peanut butter and the masculine curry gets nice and melded into our satay sauce, which is gonna be this beautiful, delightful, thick, rich sauce. Do this for about a minute or so. And would you look at that, we have our perfect sauce looking beautiful. See that satay sauce? Nice and thick and rich. All right, we're gonna kill the heat on the instant pot. Okay, now it comes time to preparing our chicken. Popular thing to do with a satay is to get like a wooden skewer and stick it in there and that's totally optional. You don't have to, but you can. It's almost like they become lollipops. Okay, look at that, lovely. Now you most certainly, like I said, you don't have to add the skewers, but they add a nice touch. Now I'm gonna take my sauce, and I'm going to brush it generously over my chicken. And that's looking delicious. And now if you want, you can just add some crushed peanuts and kind of put it on top, sprinkle them on top of your chicken. It's up to you, you don't have to add them. Totally your choice. And there we have it beautiful chicken satay with plenty of extra sauce remaining by the way and you can freeze the sauce if you want for the future you can just do whatever you want with it refrigerate it for a few days okay these look amazing let's try it out okay my friends and there they are my chicken satay Ooh, let's do one i'm so excited about this here we go chicken satay mm. I feel like a person right now who's walking around the cocktail hour offering people chicken satays, but I'm gonna like go in the closet and eat them all myself. Mm. Mm. It's delicious, it's so delicious. The chicken is perfectly cooked. It has that perfect juiciness to it. And then it has that amazing peanut butter laced satay sauce on top of the chicken. It, the fact that you can just do this yourself is really special. It's amazing. I absolutely love this recipe because not only is it going to make the perfect little appetizer for a party, but you can totally serve it as a main. You know, with all that sauce in there, you could serve it even over rice or pasta, jasmine rice, any kind of pasta you want, like a short form or a scoopy one would be great. Look at all that chicken. All right, I got to have another one. Mmm. Mmm. Delicious. And loaded with protein. Mmm. So good. This is one of those recipes you're gonna impress yourself that you did this. Now, in terms of the Massaman curry paste, it's gonna slightly vary your flavor depending on the brand you use. Always start with the two tablespoons before, you know, the four ounce can. 
Um, but then from there, if you want, at the end when you're adding the peanut butter, you can always do it to taste. It's up to you if you want to add more, because like I said, all brands will vary. I like adding the whole thing ultimately, just dividing it up, adding some before pressure cooking and some after, that's your decision. But let me tell you something, these chicken satay, mm, are gonna make me wanna satay away. So here's the recipe from my Yellow Simple Comforts book, but I also wrote three other Instant Pop cookbooks. Yes, I did. The orange one's the original one, the blue one's the lighter one, and the green one is the super shortcut one where no recipe in this book will ever exceed 10 ingredients, and if there's salt and pepper in there, that counts as two of the ingredients. I'm not kidding, any of the Instant Pot recipes in this book, no more than 10, some less than five. That simple. Check me out at facebook.com slash pressurelovecooking and make sure you give that page a like anytime a recipe comes out, deals on items, tips, you don't wanna miss anything there, maybe a little laugh or something. And at Pressure Love Cooking on all the other social channels. Thank you so much again for watching, my friends. And the next time you wanna make something that's gonna blow everybody away, well, grab some chicken and your Instant Pot and we're gonna make some satay. Enjoy. It's really good. Look at this. Look at this. I gotta serve it to everybody. Hey guys, come in and try some. It's really good.